Hi, I'm Paul Fisher, editor of SC Magazine. I'm with Selva Selvaratnam, who's the CTO of HID. We're going to be talking about smart cards in the medical industry, law enforcement, and a little bit about the uh, Olympics. Selva, welcome. What are some of the challenges in uh, the medical market, some of the issues that you face? Well, this particular industry is very uh, driven by national needs in, in, in the first instance. And um, it, 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 in, in many countries, there are, especially in the, in the Western developer countries, there are disparate systems in many, many hospitals. And the need to control access to the information that these systems hold in a controlled manner, particularly for clinical staff, is becoming more and more important. Um, that's one particular area of usage. The other area of usage, obviously, is to allow patients to control who sees what and when and to keep records of what treatments they're on and what they're entitled to as time goes forward. So both of these are needs that evolve in multiple countries as we go forward. And contact and contactless smart cards have a big role to play here in controlling access and making sure that the information is accessed, accessed in a secure manner. RFID has a particular role to play here because um, if, if you take contact or mag stripe, which was dominant in those particular areas, you have to touch something to do something. And touching something in a medical arena is it's not the wisest thing to do. So as you're moving around the hospital, it's best to have RFID to sort of allow you access to terminals as well as, informa as, well as uh, doors. We, we, in fact, have got readers that are designed for sterile environments. In particular markets such, such as Germany, we supply e-health readers that are specifically required by the government for the, for the health market. So yes, it, it, it tends to be driven country by country, but this is a particularly uh, important market where RFID is a particularly important role to play as you move forward. So how would that actually work in, in, in real terms? What would, what would patients have on those cards? I think the way it's going forward now is for, to, to allow medical staff to have access to the correct information that they want. So it, it's starting off with employees of the NHS, as it were. Whether it extends on to each individual would depend on how the government decides to drive this. In Germany, it does go down to the patient. Mm. It starts off with the uh, clinical staff and works all its way down to the patient. So it will depend how uh, the powers that be decide to drive that. How, how does the system work in Germany? Because it seems like that's a... a they're a bit ahead of us. In, well, in, they're rolling it out currently. Um, we've been involved uh, with the German government on providing our e-health terminal into that particular need. It was spec specified by the uh, German government, and we have a terminal that goes into that particular arena. We, it allows for clinicians to securely access information on, 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 a, on, on the backbone that they have defined. And this is a, a growth area in Germany that's growing. It's also tied into your national ID card. So the whole thing is just about coming together currently. What are, what are the risks in adopting a card-based uh, model? There are always risks. I mean, risk-appropriate security is a very important part of what we advise on. And um, layering security and managing lost cards and replacing cards that are lost is all part of the scenario. And it's something we get involved in, 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 in assisting with because we have a, an infrastructure that will supply cards immediately to demand uh, anywhere in the world. Um, and also manage the ID. The, the, the secure trusted ID is managed by us, so you don't get duplication, lost ones are replaced, and so on and so forth. So th it's an area that, that, that needs to be designed from the front. Some people fear having data being held on smart cards. Is that a realistic fear, do you think? Well, it, it's, it's rare that information of that nature is actually held on the card. The card is appointed to a database which holds the details. So stealing the card might, might open the door to a vault, but if, if that door is quickly the, the key to that vault is quickly changed, you're not going to be able to get in again. So I think that that fear is unfounded, and education should, should be used to, 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 to assure people that's not the way it'll go. So do you think the UK will ever uh, adopt this system? Eventually, yes. Yeah. It, how long? I can't say. It, it's going to depend on how the powers that be decide to drive it. But um, the technology is there. It's a matter of how we decide to use it as a country. And... Um, uh, HID's role is to provide the technology to our system to integrate, is to allow them to meet the needs of whoever decides to set, to set the needs. So HID are also heavily involved in law enforcement. Uh, what, are, what are the challenges and issues in, involved in working with the police force? Well, the, the, the challenges are very similar to the, to the health market, but if you look at it, um, physical access has been in, in the police systems for a long, long while to allow police officers into their own buildings. But um, th they also have the challenge of accessing information again in multiple databases. And as 
um, uh, contact and contactless smart cards again have a big role to play in physical as well as logical access into these databases. They also have a role to play in um, other areas such as the issue of firearms. Currently firearms are issued using a paper system. You know, it's matched up against the ID of a particular officer, he checks it out and it's done in reverse on the way back in. By tagging both the firearm and giving the, uh, a, a contactless smart card to the officer that is that allows him access to systems as well as the building. Both of these can be tagged uh, uh, when when, some, when a firearm is checked out and tagged back in when a, checked, a firearm is checked uh, back in. So one, it frees up all the paperwork that's required. It's electronically stored as, uh, in real time as you move forward. And it puts offices on the streets where they should be um, uh, rather than filling out paperwork. Let's talk about the UK. What are, uh -huh. what are the issues and challenges for the, for the British police in adopting this card technology? Oh. Going back a step, we hit the same problem as we have with the NHS, that there are a disparate number of systems out there and databases that the police need to access. At the same time, they have, they have requirements for physical access into their own buildings, and the NPIA is driving uh, towards all police officers carrying a single card that allow them access to both services, logical as well as physical access. This particular uh, challenge is, can be met again using RFID. Um, the current predominant technology in that market is magnetic stripe. A magnetic stripe is very easy to clone mm. and very easy to duplicate. While uh, the physical access cards that we're looking at, smart cards, are far, security is far higher. You can have multiple applications on it and you can use it for both physical as well as logical access. So what the obvious question is, what happens if the police officer loses their smart card? The same thing applies again. If, if, if a card is lost, one of the advantages is the card is a pointer or a key to a vault. So once you know the card is lost, that key can be very quickly replaced. So that key is locked out. Um, the, the person won't have access to anything from that key anymore once a new one is um, uh, issued. So the, the, the time to lock somebody out is actually very, very quick. It's the time when you notice it's lost and you've reported it, it's locked out from then on. So it, it is actually a, a secure way of doing this. HID were, were involved in the Beijing Games in China. I know that they'll be working in London in 2012. What kind of uh, developments will we see in London? Uh, in the Beijing Olympics, we were involved both in terms of physical access as well as providing some of the access control panels that we use. Our Vertex uh, 1000 range played a big role in that particular uh, arena. In London, again, the same thing will happen through our partners. One, f to secure access, uh, to, 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 to look at the sporting personnel being allowed uh, and, and administrators being allowed access to the right areas and the right buildings and the right stadia, but also for spectators to be allowed access to particular events. Um, it Smart cards will allow better control of where things happen. It'll allow um, distributed issuance of these uh, credentials as they go along securely. And it'll also make uh, forgeries uh, far more difficult. Would spectators be given a, a plastic card instead of a ticket? Is, is well, that, that is one of the possible ways forward. Uh, I, I think you'll find in sporting events in this country currently, their stadia beginning to issue RFID tickets for season tickets, for instance. And I think the same thing might apply to the Olympics itself. Because any problem with any major sporting event is counterfeit tickets. Yes. Um, which are easy, it's easy to counterfeit a piece of paper. So mm -hmm. if, if we have RFID tickets, mm -hmm. is it a lot harder to... It is much harder to, 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 to counterfeit these. It, they also bring particular advantages. If a ticket is lost, it can easily be voided from the system. It is also possible in real time to gauge that somebody's come into the stadium and therefore you can't pass it back to somebody else to, to allow multiple accesses. So in many, many areas, um, contactless smart cards give you a significant advantage in this particular area.